invest 50% of your wealth in precious metals? Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. I am super excited to have finished my one ounce gold tour around some major world mints like uh, the Mexican Mint, where I got this Libertad, the South uh, African Mint with this Cougaran, and the Perth Mint in Australia. Oh man, this, <laughs> this piece was incredibly gifted by an amazingly generous fan of Yankee stacking. Wow, oh man, I am still stunned by his generosity. So this brings my total gold stack to 33.63 ounces. I'm pretty jacked. But it made me think again about what the right percentage of wealth to have locked up in precious metals. I love both silver and gold. Each serve a similar but slightly different purpose in my precious metals stack. And I absolutely love sharing my stacking journey with all of you. I really do. And, and I hope you enjoy this video. If you do, please show it to me by poking that like button, if you would. Now, I have to admit that this is why I keep my channel anonymous. Okay, I, I simply go by the name Yankee. You know that, and I don't film my face. I like sharing my stacking insights with you, and I really try to help you all stack better. And I show my silver and gold to help inspire and encourage you not to brag. This chest of gold does represent decades of hard work, a lot of sacrifice, a lot of discipline, but more than that, and please hear this too, whether you agree with me on this or not, this is an undeserved blessing from my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You see, God owns every single ounce in my stack, and he has decided to allow me to be his gold and silver steward, at least for a while. And whether my ability to stack continues or just ends, it, it ultimately rests with him. Now, I could talk a lot more on that and how Mrs. Yankee and I uh, try to act as a, a conduit to support and bless others, but that is also something else we do anonymously, so enough of that. But back to the right percentage of one's wealth to place in precious metals. See, gold and silver don't cash flow. They don't directly yield a dividend. They just sit there looking really pretty. <laughs> so what percentage seems right? Well, I recently listened to a fascinating interview with Egon Von Greyers, founder and managing partner of Matterhorn Asset Management. They call themselves the undisputed leader in high security storage options for gold and silver outside the banking system. They hold precious metals in Switzerland and Singapore. And by the way, I'm not getting paid anything to just mention, you know, uh, uh, Egon or Matterhorn Asset Management. And sticking this gold in Singapore isn't my idea of uh, stacking the Yankee way. No, no, no. I want to vault my own precious metals. I want it with my own security systems. But anyways, Egon was interviewed back in 2019 by Brian and Daryl Paynes of As Good As Gold Australia. And I'm gonna to link to their video in the description. In that video, Egon makes a remarkable statement about the percentage of one's portfolio he personally believed should be held in gold. I started actually with a business. For the first, it was just for personal reasons, myself and, and a few investors of business friends that I advised. and. We went into gold in 2002 then, uh, in, in a major way, because I was, I, I'm looking at it only from the point of view of risk. I'm not a gold bug as such. It was really to protect against the risks I saw in the world. And already at that time, I said, you know, up to 50% of financial assets, which is very high and of course, uh, unconventional, but I've I'm, I'm never been a believer in, in conventional wisdom. 50%, wow. 
that is certainly a big portion of one's wealth. Extremely conservative on the part of Egon. But that's him. He's conservative. He's a contrarian. I do like the way he thinks. I have to admit, he, he doesn't consider himself a gold bug. Did you catch that? <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I would call anyone holding 50% of their assets in gold a gold bug. But he doesn't. Why? I think it's because of how he views gold and silver. They are primarily wealth preservation assets to him. And, and to me, too, actually. And he is hyper-concerned about risk, as I am. And he believes that over the past 20 years, the risks in the financial markets are untenable, as I do. Listen to him again. And the way I look at risk then, and, and of course, since 2002, debt has grown exponentially, basically um, trebled almost. Uh, it was just above 80 billion then, uh, global debt, and it's now 260 billion or so. Uh, and um, therefore, risk is, if, if debt grows exponentially, you know, uh, then uh, risk grows even further than that, you know, super exponentially. Uh, and therefore, now we're at a, a risk. So therefore, if I said 50% then, I would be happy with a much higher percentage now. Personally, I, I would. I know that's unconventional. Um, and I know that, as we both know, that only half a percent of world financial assets are in gold today. Now, granted, Egon knows this is an un popular perspective. He actually jokes about it. Well, there was another speaker, Richard, of the Perth Mint. I mean, he was saying 5-10% is the right uh, amount of percentage in gold, and um, anyone who thinks of a high percentage live on a different planet. So, and I was speaking right after him, and I said, here I am. I'm on a, I'm on a different planet. <laughs> I'm sure, regardless of how much silver and gold you have in your stack, there are some of your friends and family that think you're living on another planet, too. But even some less conservative financial planners and economists toss out the 10% target for precious metals as a hedge. Jim Rickarts, another economist I listen to regularly, advocates putting 10% into precious metals. And I like the 10% more than the 50% target that Egon brings up, but I can understand his mindset. A while back, I shared my uh, financial portfolio and the percentages I have in various sectors and instruments. I recommend you uh, check out that video if you haven't for more details. But when it comes to silver and gold, I'm shooting for 15% of my portfolio by age 62. I have about seven years to pull that off. And I'm just over halfway there at 8.25% of my portfolio. But 50%, man, I, I think that is a bit extreme. But who knows? <laughs> if there's a widespread economic collapse before I'm 62, I might wish I'd followed Egon's example. What do you think of that 50% target? Leave a comment down below. And as always, I hope your day is A-OK. -okay.